Good morning and welcome to church. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. And all the church said, Amen. My name is Jeremy Grenhart, and I serve as music director at Christ Lutheran in Bethesda, Maryland. And this is my co-hostess, St. Cecilia, patron saintess of music, and we are coming to you live and direct from our living room in Philadelphia this morning to welcome you to this All Saints Sunday. Amen. Now, wherever you are on your faith journey, we want to assure you that you are welcome in this space. If you're a friend who's been along this journey with us for a little while, then we welcome you back, and it's great to see you. And if you're new to this space, wherever you are along your journey, questioning what it means to be Christian or Lutheran or what it means to be in relationship with this Jesus guy, we want to assure you that you are also most welcome in this space. Now, the way that we usually begin our service is with a time of confession and forgiveness. But as I mentioned, today is All Saints Sunday. Well, what's that, Jer? Uh, that is a time where we can remember. Uh, we call them saints, even though we both know that you and I are, are both saints and sinners at the same time. But we remember the saints that we've lost over the last year. And we also remember the ancestors of our faith. So this morning we are going to begin our service with a litany for the saints. Will you please pray with me? We lift up to you, O God, the names of those we have lost in the past years from our lives, knowing that they are with your heart forever. As we read these names, we'll pause after every name to remember, pray, and give thanks for their lives. Mr. K. K. Alexander. Mr. Gabriel Kavicki. Mrs. Linda Crossland. Mr. Anil George. Mr. Frank Goodyear. Mr. P. V. George. Mr. Bruce Grimm. Mrs. May Jones. Mr. Harry Knorr. Mr. Sonny Matthew. Mrs. Esther Muller. Mr. P. V. Samuel. Mr. Kenny Shriver. Mrs. Ann Springer. Mr. Rich Strickland. Mr. Gilbert Teets. <clears throat> Lord, we celebrate the lives of those we have named, O oh God, and we lift up many more names in our heart. Family of God, we remember you and we honor you. We know you are with us in the spirit of worship, and you will not be forgotten. We give you thanks, O God, for all who have gone on to join with you beyond this life. We trust in the hope of the resurrection and the promise of new life in Christ, and know that in our grief and celebration, O God, you are with us through, through it all, and we are not left alone. In the name of Christ, in whom loves lives forever, we pray. Amen. Well, we're going to jump right into the Word today, and we're going to hear a Jill to read Psalm 146 for us, and then graciously, one of our cool council members, to whom I frequently refer, Lalitha, has agreed to read our epistle for us, uh, so we'll be in the book of Hebrews, and then we will be in the Gospel according to St. Matthew today. 
A reading from Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. When their bread departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lalitha John. I am a member of Christ Lutheran Church, and I also serve on the church council. Uh, today's reading is from Hebrews chapter 9, verses 24 through 28. Here begins the reading. Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself again and again as the high priest enters the holy place year after year with the blood that is not his own. For then he would have had to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once, and after that the judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Here ends the reading. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit. The Holy Gospel according to John for this All Saints Festival. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and those who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So they said to him, oh, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. 
Then the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Greetings to you, people of God, wherever you might be this morning. As advertised, I am Gene Kern, and I am happy to be the pastoral presence in your worship today. Transition and change are what I love most about congregation life and ministry, and I most recently served five congregations in the Metro D.C. Synod as a transition or interim pastor. Today, the church celebrates the Festival of All Saints. The day itself was actually last Monday, but we observe it today for our convenience. It is, in my mind, such a happy day, I think, because it calls to mind the great cloud of witnesses, the cloud of the saints, past, present, and future, that surround us in our collective and individual journeys. One of the best practices I ever saw in a congregation celebrating all saints was that as they paused in their worship to remember those who have died in the last year, they also paused in that same prayer to remember all those who had been baptized in the past year. It was a beautiful and memorable way of balancing out and providing a broad, full definition of what we mean by the communion of saints, especially on All Saints celebrations. And I think the gospel for today reminds us yet again that what we think of as living and dying are perceived somewhat differently in the mind of God. We see in the story of Lazarus, for example, just as we will soon see in the story of Jesus come Holy Week, that God has a penchant for not letting the dead stay dead. Of all the things that we know about our Lord, our God, this is probably the most telling, the most transformational and hopeful thing we know. That what we think we know about death does not negate what God apparently understands about life. Lazarus is at least a precursor who puts flesh on the bones of the notion of life after death. It's true the story of Lazarus is not a story of resurrection. He is restored to life, and presumably one day down the line he does finally die. But his restoration to life kindles our own sense of adventure and hope that our own hoped-for resurrection just might be something like Lazarus's restoration to life. That what we think will be the end of the reality that is us may just in fact be a beginning of life. Not unlike the unlikely assemblage of earthly elements that preceded our births. And this experience, as ill-defined and hard to pin down as that is, is what gives us hope and joy this day of all saints, because we are all in this together. The year my father died, he died in the heat of the August summer. His death was the first to touch my life in a significant way. I remember those days and weeks and months after his death as I sort of made my way through the new reality of the world without him in it until I found myself in church Thanksgiving Eve where I was preaching at a community service. The Lutherans, the Methodists, and the Baptists were all there. I found myself following the cross down the center aisle during the procession. And for reasons I can't understand, explain fully, it felt odd. Here we were gathered to express thanks, gathering under a first century symbol of death. But if that procession gave me pause, the Apostles' Creed brought my night to a standstill. I believe in the resurrection of the body. Wow! There it was. 
the words we, you, I say every week. But suddenly, for me, I was saying these words out loud with many people I did not know, that I believed in the resurrection of my dad. I got choked up. I couldn't speak for several moments as I pondered in a new way for the first time the wondrous mystery and incredible promise of this faith that we hold. In another place and another time, you and I might have a good reflection on what precisely our church means by our profession of a resurrection of the body. But for now, for today, can we just affirm that our belief in resurrection life, at the very least, means that death does not tear a hole in the seam of creation? In the economy of God, nothing and no one is lost, ever. And this is why I say that All Saints is such a celebration, because all means all. We leave the ultimate mysteries to the keep of heaven and live confidently that we belong. And in the meantime, we are free to live as people of grace and hope in the world. As people who work for good and who strive for justice and try to renew the face of the earth. So, if you can, Get your vaccine and your booster. Don't parlay in stupid. Try to be as vital a force for good in this world as you can be. Trust science. That's where we see God most clearly. And God would be seen. And God would be present with you. And remember that while the history of the world is always written by the most powerful and the most successful and the most wealthy, heaven uses a different yardstick, the treatment of the poor. Great is the government that holds the care of the least as its top priority. Wise are the people who understand that in the rising tide that lifts all boats, a rising lifeboat is not adequate housing for anyone. And prepared is the world who understands this planet, the one we call home, is in peril. And everything, everything we know, we are, and we have comes from this earth. If all of this seems a bit much, <clears throat> if our ability to manage all of this feels frayed, look <clears throat> at the record and remember that just when things seem the most impossible, when it seems like darkness has won the day, God always does a new thing and comes resolutely to offer us a restoration to life. Today, as you remember those you have loved, those who have died, think too how their life goes on in you and through you, how in their living, your living was shaped. And then in turn, consider how you might do that still for those you know and the world in which we find ourselves. May God bless you and give you strength for the journey and joy in the faith of our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor Kern, for both a kind and thoughtful message. Uh, we hope that you will be back with us in the virtual pulpit again very soon. Amen. Well, let's do this together. Uh, let's sing for all the saints. And then Taylor is going to move us into the prayers of the people.
Good morning. Thank you for joining our service today. My name is Taylor, and I serve as one of the worship leaders here at Christ Lutheran, and I invite you into our time of the prayers of the people. Now, today is a special day. It's one that we call All Saints Day. Today, we will honor the saints that have come before us. We also want to not only acknowledge the formal saints, but also those individuals who served as a reminder that we can be the positive change we want to see. They have inspired us to, and made great impact on our world, church, community, or us as individuals. These individuals prove that heaven can exist here on earth. Today's prayers will be a little different. In remembrance of the saints and special people who shined a positive light on this world, I will light a candle and offer space of silence for you to also remember. While I will say a few names of, the, of a few individuals, there are hundreds of saints, <laughs> both known and unknown to be thankful for. And uh, I'd run out of candles. <laughs> Therefore, I invite you to also say a few names of individuals that you'd like to remember. If you'd like to light a few candles in remembrance, now's a great time to grab them. Feel free to pause me and come back. I'll be here ready for you when you're ready. All right, ready? Here we go. For our world, we pray for peace and love, two ideals which so many of our worldly saints fought to promote. It can be so hard to see the fruits of these battles with violence and anger being so prevalent, but we have endured. And physically, we are still fighting against, in many places, the coronavirus. It has reminded us the fragility of life that we have been given. Indeed, our mortality can be scary, all the more reason to honor the sanctity of life. In the moments in which we feel overwhelmed by the darkness our world may contain, your world directs us to be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. The saints left their mark on the world, on the earth for you, for us, for our children to come. Thank you, God, for the tremendous sacrifices made by those who have gone before us. Bless the memories of your saints, God. May we learn how to walk wisely from their examples of faith, dedication, worship, and love. Lift up more world leaders dedicated to bringing your will all around the world. Help them to make the decisions that reflect compassion and wisdom all over the people that they lead. Lift up those entities, missionaries, organizations, and corporations that exist to help and serve others. We thank you for their fervent de dedication and service. We remember world saints like Nelson Mandela, Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., Mother Teresa, St. Augustine, just to name a few. Please take this space to remember more saints that come to your mind in which you are thankful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our community, this has been a long year and a half of fighting COVID-19. Five million people worldwide have lost their lives and almost 750,000 deaths occurring in our nation. It has undoubtedly changed our lives forever. In the midst of the global pandemic, we have seen Countless selfless individuals, nurses, doctors, health profession, professionals, volunteers, and countless others immediately jump into action to care for those who have fallen ill. We lift up those who have lost their lives fighting COVID and those still on the front lines. Bring us together, Father. Help us to do the things that protect ourselves and those around us. Remind us just how connected we are. We thank you for the community entities that exist to serve others, such as hospitals, churches, nonprofits, shelters, and community centers, and the individuals that, who ensure their operation. Show us how to be selfless and kind to others, O oh God. We thank you for civil servants who also serve you, Lord, and attempt to advance your kingdom here on earth. Change is hard, but, will, but it will come when people speak your word, your truth, outside the four walls of the church building. 
This action transforms the world into your church and people into prophets. Guide us in the strength and wisdom as we continue to grapple with issues of equity in our society. We thank you for the examples of Dr. Martin Luther King, Abraham Lincoln, Maya Angelou, John Lewis, Clara Barton, just to name a few. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our church, Lord, we thank you for the church. We are blessed to have guidance from both worldwide church leaders and the ones who work locally in our very own ministry. You have given us the most prolific example in Jesus who gave his life for our eternal salvation. We thank you for the saints and reformers who have gone before us. Thank you for giving us the saints who encourage us to their example to pick up the cross and follow you just as they had. The world is in great need of your message of love today. Inspire us to boldly and freely proclaim your message of love and hope for all people. Help us to find meaningful ministries for partnership and stewardship in the surrounding communities. As Pastor Matt reminded us last week, Let us continue to be graceful reformers, embracers of change, and pioneers in spreading the gospel in new ways. Thank you for all of the examples you have given us to study. Lord, examples such as St. Martin Luther, St. Francis de Sisi, Mary and Martha, all the biblical prophets, saints, disciples, and holy martyrs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, for our people. Lord, we thank you for the example of the saints and individuals who have stayed on your path to help usher our world, community, neighborhoods, and us as individuals closer to the vision you see for us. Lift us everyday people who are saints, our teachers, public servants, volunteers, those who seek truth and righteousness, the peacemakers, May we inherit the kingdom of heaven. Let us also do our inner work that we might achieve positive outward change like the saints before us. Let us conform in your image, O God, and devote ourselves to seeking you, your will, in all that we do. We are also entering that time in which of the year when it's getting colder. The holidays are coming, and for some, the winter months may resurface some difficult feelings especially if this time around family members and friends, so many memories have been built around aren't necessarily with us. If that's the case, we pray for mental fortitude to navigate the feelings this season may bring. And we pray for those we have lost this year and before. We pray for those who mourn. May you be comforted and surrounded by compassion and love. I will light a candle in fond remembrance of my mother, Valerie Chapman Lee, my grandpa, Charles Chapman, my aunt, Nicole Chapman, and my childhood pastor, Dr. Anthony Shipley. also light a prayer for your prayers as well. A candle for your prayers too. During this time, I'm going to offer a virtual spiritual space for the prayers of you, you of the people. Please feel free to take up this moment to offer up any prayers you might have, aloud or silently. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We place all of these prayers, the ones we haven't prayed yet, in the silent meditations of our hearts at the foot of the cross. And we pray in Jesus' holy name and the words that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever. Let the church say, Amen. Thanks, Taylor. Well, as always, as you have prayer requests, do be in touch, and you can do one of a few things. Leave a comment right below. Uh, you can be in touch with me directly, as some of you have, uh, or anyone on the Cool Council is also up for fielding prayers. We all love praying for you. Amen. Also, please consider living generously with us, as our ministry does require your support. Well, how do you do that? Just take two minutes out of your day and go check out ChristLutheranBethesda.org and there you can find ways to both engage and give to the ministry. Also share this service, that's free. You can forward the service or, or send the email or just post it on social media. Uh, God's word and the good news is for everyone. Well, let's sing together one more time as we finish our service. Good morning, church. On this beautiful All Saints Day, we are just going to lift up a little ditty. You all know it. It's Oh, when the saints go marching in. So feel free to sing along with us. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, how I want to be in that number. people of God, as we go forth from here into our work week, into our home lives, having remembered the saints who have passed before us, please receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs>